So this is the first edition of the Sports Max Zone for 2024. Now, as you all know, on uh, the Zone Show, we are committed to giving you the best of the best, spanning all of sports, and we were thrilled to be part of your sporting lives throughout and uh, enthralling 2023. Now, since last year was filled with a number of gripping and exciting moments for all of us, our producers have tasked myself and my co-host today, Leighton Levy, with the awesome responsibility of giving our top three sporting stories for 2023, and to then look ahead to our top three stories that we are um, anticipating for the upcoming 2024 season. Um, well, Leighton, let's, let's take your top three moments first from, from last year. Well, my top three moments are kind of collectives because it's not just one specific event. And I'll start with, because there, look, let me just coach this by saying there were a lot of incredible um, Caribbean related performances last in 2023. And it was very difficult for me to come up with, with three. But one of the things that I learned early in my career as a journalist is that anything that sticks in your head first when you think about things are usually the things that are the ones that make the most impact on you. So these are my three um, top picks for 2023. And of course, it starts at the World Championships in August where Daniel Williams, who nobody expected to win the gold medal in the sprint hurdles, given that she literally had to dive across the line at the national championships in Jamaica to get onto the, the plane. Team, yeah. But then to get there and take on the world's best, the world record holder in the, in the, in the 100 meter hurdles, the world record holder, the 100 meter the Olympic champion and the world champion, and beat everyone. That for me. Out of lane one. Out of lane one as well. And of course, so that was the first one of that of my first pick and of course Antonio Watson because everybody knows and we said it on the show Ricardo and I had a discussion about the fact that Stephen Gardner unless somebody shot him was going to win gold medal in the 400 meters he gets injured for the second consecutive major championships which then opened the field up and to see Antonio Watson come through and become the first Jamaican to win a world cha championship gold medal since the very first iteration of the event in 1983 when Bert Cameron won was remarkable for me, given the progress that we've seen him make through high school coming into the, the senior ranks, which is pretty much his first year as a senior athlete, for him to do that. And of course, he caps it off with Sherika Jackson's 200 meter um, 21.41, which is the second fastest time of all time. So that's the World Championship. That's my first event. The second thing for me was in the context of the fact that Jamaica's women largely for me in this country unappreciated for what they've accomplished in football having qualified for the world cup in 20, 20, 2019 and of course didn't do so well at the world at the world cup but then qualified again and then to do something that no team in the caribbean has ever done male or female advanced to the quarterfinals of the, of the world cup which makes them one of the best teams in the world in fact i think overall they were ranked 13th in the world coming out of the world cup you know, based on their performances. That for me was an, an occasion that would live with me for a very long time. Because not only did they hold France, who was favored to destroy Jamaica to a goalless draw, but they also held Brazil to a goalless draw as well. And of course, beating Panama to advance to the second round. The fact that they, they managed to navigate that very difficult zone to get out of their zone and get in to the quarterfinal round, that was re remarkable. My third event for the top, my top three, the, the top three for me, is another collective. And it goes to Julian Alfred of St. Lucia, who during the course of her season last year at NCAA, indoors, 6.94, the second fastest time ever behind Arena Prabolova's 6.92. And then 22.01, over 200, early, only Merlin Otti is fastest. It's a new NCAA record, of course, the second fastest time in history. And then going outdoors to destroy and dominate every competitor, everything that was thrown at her at NCAA's outdoors, and to cap the season off with an unprecedented Bowman Award, never before has a St. Lucian athlete, and become the first Caribbean woman to win a Bowman at NCAA levels since the awards were announced in 2009. For me, that was one of the more memorable, most memorable moments for me in 2003. Fantastic performances from all of those involved. Yeah, and she was the, actually the first non-American ever to win the Women's Award at the Bowman. Absolutely. So that, was, that was fantastic. And uh, great to see St. Lucia having an athlete on the global stage uh, coming so, so soon after the retirement of Laverne Spencer, who had won 
you know, multiple acc accolades as an international high jumper. Absolutely, I and mean, she surpassed. She, in fact, in my mind, notwithstanding how great Laverne Spencer was for St. Lucia, I think Julian Alfred has already surpassed her yes, in many has. respects. You know, silver at the Commonwealth Games in 2022. You know, she's made the fourth place at the World Championships in the in the 200 and fifth in the in the 100, which two of the fastest races ever assembled when you consider the times that were run in those events. And she's right now on the cusp of joining the elite of the elite in world sprinting. So, you know, fantastic year for her, as well as the others who I mentioned, of course. Can Daniel Williams go back and win her first Olympic gold medal? We'll see this year, but we'll talk about that later on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can transition quickly into your looking ahead to 2024 before I go through my 23 and, and my expectations for 24 as well, because as you said at the top of the show, Leighton, um, 2024 is going to be a very big year and um, so many major events coming up that we are, are anxiously awaiting, including the Olympics, of course, in Paris. Absolutely. And one of my first in um, expectation, well, what I'm looking forward to most, of course, starts in March, the World Indoor Championships. Again, going back to Julian Alfred, because 694, while a student, while studying, while doing all of the different things required of her academically, now that she's a pro athlete, coming off a season like she has, 694, is Irina Privalova's world record under threat at the World Indoor Championships? She had mentioned it on the, on, the, on the zone when she did the interview with you guys last year that she's going to run indoors. So can she break that world record? That's one of the things that I'm looking forward to most um, for 2024. I'm hoping Julian Alfred will be able to do it because I think she has the potential. She's shown it. Three, first woman under seven seconds at the NCAA level. NCAA level. She's done it three times last year. And now she's pro. Mm, let's see what Eric Farrell can get her to do in 2024. Mm. Of course, my second thing would be the, the Copa America comes up. And it's not just for Jamaica as well. It's one, I want to see what the CONCACAF teams can do at Copa. Because in my mind, with the exception of perhaps Argentina, I think CONCACAF has closed the gap a little bit on the teams in, in, in CONCACAF. Yes. So I think this is an opportunity for CONCACAF to prove themselves. And that's one of the things that I'm look, I'm keenly looking forward to um, at the Copa America this, Ju uh, this summer, in, in July, I think it was. And then the, the other thing that I'm looking forward to is the Nations League. Um, Jamaica has advanced to the quarterfinals to the semifinals, Semis. sorry, and they'll play a United States team that right now looks a little bit vulnerable. But Jamaica itself, while I think Jamaica has the tools to, to do damage, their midfield remains a concern. So I'm wondering whether or not coach Hal Grimson will find a way to fix that Jamaican midfield and allow it, this team to be as good as it, as it possibly can be, given the quality that surrounds this team, especially on the front line, um, with uh, Damara Gray and, of course, Leon Bailey, who is having a, the peak of a season in the English Premier League. And a solid defence, solid enough defence. One of the things that we saw in the last round was that they used um, Damian Lowe as a defensive midfielder. That's one of the things that I'm curious to see about when they go into the Nations League, whether or not they'll use him again, similar to how they used him against Canada, which yielded exceptional results, Jamaica winning for the first time in Canada at that level in forever, you know? So, you know, that's something that I'm keen on seeing as well um, for um, the, the Nations League. And of course, the Olympics, the Olympics cannot go without mentioning the Olympic Games. This is going to be massive in many respects for the Caribbean. It's going to be the final hurrah for a number of Caribbean athletes, no less than Shelly and Fraser Price for last Olympic Games and probably what will be her most difficult Olympic Games, given the fact that previously, there have been a big three in women's track and field, largely, you know, Elaine Thompson, Hera Sherika Jackson, and of course, Shirley Fraser Price herself. Shakari Richardson has now entered that equation in a big way, having won the World Championships in 1065. Can Shelly Ann Fraser Price win in Paris for her third Olympic gold medal? Can she, will she be on the podium, given the quality of the talent that surrounds her? Because not only are we looking at the, the big three, of course, in Sherika Jackson, Elaine Thompson here, if they come back to form. But there's Dina Asher Smith and Mary Jose Talou, who, based on what we saw last year, is getting even better as she is. It's like fine wine. Like Shelly and Fraser Price, she runs faster every, she'll be running faster every year. 
So that's a big, big, big thing for me to look out for in 2024, along with Hans of Parchment. Can he defend an Olympic title? We saw him come last year, 1293, and beat um, the reigning world champion, um, Holloway, what? It was the Diamond League final, of yes. course. 1293, looking... Coming from in, behind, as he Coming from behind, does, yeah. yes, and looking really good. Or can Rashid Broadbell find redemption from the world championships where he fell, where he was, for me, one of the favorites, and come through and win his first Olympic title? And there are many, many, many stories in the Olympics that we look forward to. I suppose that discussion will take place during the course of the year. But for me, those are the things that I'm looking forward to in 2024. Yeah, um, a lot of my my listing would, would overlap as well. Let's have a quick look at my 2023 outstanding moments. And it's gonna to be topped by Shelly Ann Fraser Price being announced the Laureus Award winner for on the women's side. Um, for the second year in a row, a, a Jamaican sprinter gets it because Elaine Thompson had been before. the winner in 2022. Um, the triple gold performances at the Budapest World Championship, finishing up second for me there. But I, I want to, emphasize that a Shelley Ann Fraser Price Laureus Award honor in 2023, 15 years after she won her first major Olympic or global title yeah. at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, speaks to her longevity. And uh, we are talking about more than a decade of consistent world-beating performances at the global level. And I'm saying that for Shelly Ann, in her mid-30s, to win this award, following many years when she could have been a contender. But she'd been nominated six times. Six times, is, is nothing short of phenomenal. And um, that, that moment for me was the, the biggest moment in 2023, because we know the list of Laureus Award winners, Serena Williams, Simone Biles, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a proliferation of phenomenal world stars. And she shared the stage with uh, none other than Lionel Messi, who was a Men's uh, mm -hmm. Laureus Award winner for 2023. For performances, of course, in 2022. Mm -hmm. So Ricardo and I had been discussing it, and um, she was awarded in 23 because of what she did in 22. Yeah. So these, this award wasn't a, 22, a 2023 performance Mr. award. She was being awarded for what she did in 22. But I, it just stands out to me that we know the global phenomenon that Lionel Messi is. And for Shelly Ann Fraser Price to share the same stage with him for a 2023 Laureus Award is, is for me the biggest moment for a Caribbean athlete in, in 2023. And to your point, Lance, I mean, because when you're considered, as I mentioned before, she has been nominated six times for the Laureus, which means that she's always been in that conversation. That's the point I'm making. You know? it, it's, not, it, it, it's not a career mm -hmm. that has, I, I want to say it's not a career that has, that has, that is peaking now. She peaked from 2008. Yeah, she's... And she just kept this level up, apart from a couple of years when she had injuries and wasn't able to do her best. This is a, a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, but I, like, I keep asking people who, who argue otherwise, who, how many athletes, male or female, have been as dominant as she has been throughout her entire career? That's right. You know, the only times when she was not a contender or a medalist was when she was out with, when she was pregnant. Yes. You know, and of course, when you look what happened in 2016 with a sesamoiditis with her toe, where anybody else, I would, I would, I would say this unchallenged. I don't care who comes with our argument. When you run with that kind of injury and still manage to get a medal on a podium in a very stacked field with Talu and of course Elaine Thompson here eventually won and the late Tor Bowie, you know, it was a quality field and to yeah. able to be able to come through and still end up on the podium with that injury yeah. just speaks to the quality that she's been able to deliver for 15 years at the very top. Yeah, and uh, of course, my, my, my other two would, would, would straddle yours as well with the Budapest uh, success of the triple gold for uh, Jackson, Daniel Williams and uh, Antonia Watson as well. And I agree that the Jamaica Reggae Girls performance at the um, World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, historic and, and makes the grade as well for me. My looking ahead to 2024 is a little different from yours. There are some uh, similarities because there is nothing bigger in 2024 than the Paris Olympics will be. But I'm closely watching as well 
the hope of a West Indies cricket revival because there was the disappointment of not qualifying for the 50 over World Cup. The Caribbean side is hosting the T20 World Cup this year in the Caribbean and there are signs that a potent T20 team is being built so I'll be closely watching their development. Zane Maloney, the 20-year-old Barbadian Formula 2 driver, is, is making waves because Leighton when June comes up this year, it will make 40 years that I'm in this thing, in this business. And um, I can't recall at any stage any motor racing driver in the Caribbean anywhere close to getting a Formula One contract. And uh, Zane Maloney, after dominating Formula Three in 2019, well, he won Formula Four, Four. in 2019, um, breezed through Formula Three, got a Formula Two contract last year with the Rodin Carlin Group. Uh, he had four podium finishes last year including a fastest lap performance at the Red Bull Ring in Austria. And um, I just think that this is a story that the Caribbean should be really, really proud of. I'm not the biggest motor racing fan, as you know, but I respect the work that has to go into a driver getting to the level that Zane Maloney has, has gotten to. And uh, in 2024, I'll be watching him very very closely because he just recently signed, re-signed mm. for the Rodin Carlin Group for the Formula 2 season in 2024 and we're looking for great things from him. Of course there are other motor racing stars from the Caribbean making waves. Um, McConnell from Jamaica mm. with the rally driving and uh, Sarah Mazir uh, who is also um, creating history as a, as a woman in, in the sport. So, and Alex Powell, the young go-kart driver mm -hmm. as well. So, and the Somerville kids as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the, the, there, there is a rise in motor racing proficiency coming out of the Caribbean and uh, that is being led by Maloney. Absolutely, and I, co I completely agree with you because one of the things that when you look at Maloney's career, you know, you kind of think Lewis Hamilton. I mean, I mean, Lewis Hamilton's family is from Grenada. So, but he had the opportunity of being in the UK, where yeah. the opportunities were a lot more readily available. That's right. Access was was there, but for, for what Maloney has been doing, it's nothing short of remarkable. And I agree with you entirely. I think he's clearly someone that you have to look out for in 2024 and beyond, because I think there's so much potential there. I've watched him drive, and sometimes when you watch, you you tend to think from a Caribbean perspective. You're not used to seeing the Caribbean drivers do this at this level consistently. And when you watch him drive, you completely forget that he's from Barbados. You're, you're thinking, uh, you know, European, Germany or England or Italy or somewhere. But he drives like somebody who belongs in this, on the circuit. So it's somebody clearly you yeah. kind of well, look it's, it's in his DNA, his, his dad and uncles and so on yeah. are, are big motor racing men in Barbados yeah. as well. Especially so. on, the, on the Dover, the Caribbean motor racing circuit yeah. for so, many years. Yeah, so um, he, he's cut from the right cloth. <laughs> we, we, we'll watch and see his progress along with so many other Caribbean stars getting ready to unleash their quality on the global space in sport in 2024. We go to break back with more on the Sports Night Zone, the first show for 2024 after this. Thank <laughs> you.